clarify that. I don't know if this has been recorded by one. There didn't need no newspaper articles or Facebook posts or anything. That was before he knew what it was. And I said, well, we maybe better find out what it is first. And then after he found out what it was, then he wasn't for it. So that's good. But he started getting nervous about the Titanic. I started thinking about Jonah and the whale. And I started, I wasn't sure because you actually went out to see, see the whales. And about that time, I think Brother Blankenship and Brother Cunningham messaged us and said they rented a van and we was going to tour it. Yeah. Got a little safer on that, so that was our, our rescue. Amen. Amen. What an honor and privilege to be back here with you. And it worked out so well because I was thinking, I was like, this is the first Pentecost Sunday and I don't know how long when I didn't, didn't get to preach. And it just worked out. It's kind of like a high school varsity football player not having a prom date, you know what I mean? So the band just can't preach on Pentecost Sunday. But... It's the Lord's doings, and it's marvelous in our eyes. He worked it all out, and I hope I can do my part. That's the main thing. We believe this is orchestrated of God, but I've got to do my part. You guys going to do your part? Amen. Yes, sir. Uh oh, I said it's a little quiet here. No, usually, maybe it's a Texas bunch. You think they're too quiet? <laughs> Glad to have all these folks from Texas. I mean, now, you praise the Lord in Texas, don't you? Yeah, yeah. He's a God. He's, he's God everywhere, right? That's it. He's God in California. He's God in Illinois. He's God in Texas. He's God in Tennessee. Yep, yep. In fact, he's God in every state except for the state of confusion. Right. Amen. So if you're confused today, get out of that state so he can be God in your life. Amen. Don't you love the Lord? Amen. Now we're here. Today is a Sunday we consider the Lord's Day, right? But it's not enough to be here on the Lord's Day. We've got to get the Spirit right, right, on the Lord's Day because things change when you get the Spirit. John was on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's Day and he got the Spirit. Right. And things begin to change. And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I'm Alpha Woo! and Omega, the first and the last. Amen. Amen. I he who liveth was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. He said, I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. I turned to see the voice that spake with me being turned. I saw seven golden candlesticks. Right. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one, not two, not three, one. Right. Like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down the foot, girded about the pants with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, yep, yep. as white as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire. And his feet like a defined grass that they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And his countenance was as the sun shining. It is streaked, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am he that liveth that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. Aren't you glad that you serve the risen Savior? Aren't you glad that you serve the blessed and only Father's name? Give me the keys and the Lord of the world. Who are they that have been your telling you? Well, in the light which no man can approach unto, who no man has seen. Sit his word. 
word and healing you can have, but you need. Acts chapter 1, I think they're going to have it on the overhead. You can read my handwriting. We're going to read the first nine verses. It shouldn't take too long, so don't be too worried. And I will try not to preach too, too long as long as I don't get traveling down memory lane. <laughs> One of the Bishop and Sister Bradshaw, Pastor Brian and Lord Bradshaw, all my friends that are here, I don't want to name you because I might miss some. But uh, it's an honor, honor to be back home. Yeah. This is a church, not this church building, right, right. but this is where I received the Holy Ghost back in the storefront. Anybody remember the storefront? We had some powerful services. My goodness, powerful service. I used to walk by there before I got to church and hair in my arm to stand up and do some things. I was, the Spirit of the Lord would follow me. Such powerful services. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for those days. And I'm thankful for these days. I'm thankful for the Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, This former treatise, treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of his yeah. sight. I want to try to just preach for a little bit on this subject this, this morning. The hour of power. The hour of power. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Lord, there's a lot of things in this world we don't know if they're true or not, but we know that thy word, O oh Lord, is truth that is forever settled in heaven. And I thank you for your word. Lord, I ask you to confirm your word this morning. Show yourself alive with the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord rest upon me, make me a quick understanding in the people. Lord, let the anointing come today and break every yoke. Break every yoke. Some serious yokes are here this morning. I ask you Break them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. And we thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Let's clap our hands before we see Amen. Let me see. Amen. I want to uh, say something real quick before we really get started. You know, we hear a lot about the, the passion of Jesus. They have passion plays and so on and so forth. And I don't mean to cross any theological swords with you because there's no swords that theologically cross. It's just truth. <laughs> the passion of Jesus wasn't on the cross. It wasn't being born. In fact, he didn't want to go to the cross. Would you want to go to the cross? The Bible, he said, he who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. He didn't like it. There's only one place in the Bible where it talks about the passion of Jesus. It's right here in Acts chapter 1 verse 3. It said he showed himself alive after his passion. His passion is to show himself alive. The only reason he went to the cross was so he could show himself alive. And if he didn't raise from the dead, then we're all still in our sins. Aren't you glad? And I already said, aren't you glad that he has Stories over death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. Aren't you glad that he has the keys of the kingdom? Aren't you glad, amen? He said, oh, death, where is that sting, oh, grave? Yeah. Where is that corruption? Where is that victory? Yeah. Amen. I'm so thankful. And his passion is to show himself alive. The only hope we have in 2022 is for Jesus Christ to show himself alive. If he doesn't, we're all in a heap of trouble. Right. If he doesn't show himself alive, we're in a world of hurt. Yes, the only chance the apostles had in their day was that Jesus 
assumed himself a liar. Because everybody said they were liars. Yeah. Everybody said they came by night and took his body right, right, out of the grave. Right, right. Amen. When they started jumping up at the gates, beautiful, and the ankle bones were strengthened. Amen. And blind eyes started getting open. You couldn't really argue with that lie because Jesus showed himself alive. And it's his passion to show himself alive today. Hmm. Amen. The only place you'll find where the Bible talks about the passion of Jesus Christ. Amen. He despised the shame. He did it for the joy that was set before him. Amen. In fact, we pray, if it be possible, take this from you. Let this cup pass from you. Amen. He didn't want to do it. Aren't you glad that he didn't stop? Amen. He resisted sin under the blood, and that's why we're all here today. Anybody, anybody ever been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. for the remission of your sins? Aren't you thankful that there's a fountain filled with blood flowing from a man side? I'm so Thank you for that. Now here in our scripture text, Jesus right before his ascension begins to talk to his disciples. Amen. He told them, think about it, this was the last message Jesus gave on this earth. The last message he gave to his apostles, his holy apostles. You know, a lot of times you hear any last words, people get ready to die, or whatever you, you cherish those words, maybe if you have a father or mother that passed away or, or a close relative or something and they know they're going to die, sometimes they say the most important thing to you right before the die. The, the one thing that really matters they say to you before you die, and I want to get this context in your mind, Jesus right before he ascended, right before he left him, his very last message, he taught him what he thought was the most important message, and he told him he said, do not Leave Jerusalem without the promise. Right. Don't leave Jerusalem until you're endued with the power from on high. Right. I would like to tell you this morning, if you don't have the Holy Ghost today, don't leave this building without the Holy Ghost. Right. This may be the last time you see me, and I've got one message for you, and it is you must be born again of water and of spirit. Do not leave today without repenting, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Such a, a dissimulation, amen, with his 
brethren that he, he split his son, and I, I can relate to him down this almost seems perfect. I, I do another message talking about right spirit. I can show you that, 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 that John wasn't always perfect. Right. Yeah, right. Because it was John and, and James that wanted to call down fire yeah. Yeah. on him. Yeah. It, was, it was John who said, uh, we see some, Master, we see some people right. cast out those names for bad to him because they wasn't the same click as John. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. It was John who wanted to call out fire. It was John who had a position right that he wanted to be. He and his brother wanted to be on the right hand and the left hand. Didn't care about the other ten. Just get us on the right hand. But something changed in John. John seemed like he was perfect. John was the love of apostle. Amen. But I can relate to all the rest of the apostles. Amen. And here Jesus is talking to them about the Holy Ghost. Don't leave Jerusalem and the Holy Ghost with John preached about. The right. last three and a half years, four years, you've been hearing this message from John, and now you're hearing it from me. And uh, don't leave Jerusalem until you're new with power from on high. And then the apostle, have you ever talked to somebody and it seems like they're just waiting for you to get them talking so they can say what they yep. got to say? Yep. Doesn't really seem like they're, they're interested in what you've got to say, but they're just waiting for you to hurry up and get your time in so they can say what they got to say. That almost appears like what the apostles were doing to Jesus. Jesus said, Don't leave Jerusalem until you're doing the power from high. And as soon as he got done, the disciples switched gears. They said, Lord, do you this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Where did that come from? Like a little kid just ignoring them so they get done. Can we have ice cream? <laughs> All right. Amen. Jesus was trying to tell them about the Holy Ghost. Jesus was trying to give them the notion, and they were worried about a nation. Yeah. Amen. Jesus was talking about power, but they were worried about the hour. Right. Amen. Jesus was, now they were worried about the situation, and Jesus was trying to tell them about demonstration, right. because you're going to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you're going to be witness unto me in Jerusalem, yeah. and Judea, and throughout all. This and, and they kind of just annoyed him or ignored him and, and went on with what they had to say. And I love what Jesus said unto them. In verse 7 it says, Not for you to know the times or the season which the Father had put in his own power. There's some things we don't need to worry about. Mm. Mm. Some of you sitting here this morning got your mind so cluttered up with a bunch of things you don't need to be worried about. Yeah. You just need to be worried about what he said. You just need to be worried about the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Because those, those problems are temporal. Right. I was says, while we look out at the things that are seen and the things that are not seen, the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You need to get your eyes off of the problem, get your eyes on the promise. You need to get your eyes off the situation. You get your eyes on the solution. You need to get your eyes off the deliverer. You get your eyes on the deliverer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We've got to look unto Him. The Bible said to look unto Him. We're lighting in their faces. We're not ashamed. Hallelujah. Amen. So they said, Will you at this time restore the kingdom? Israel, Jesus said, Ain't none of your business. Hey, now you know Jesus told that a few times. Is worried about you. I don't. Don't worry about him. What if I tear you really come? Don't worry about it. Follow about me. All we've got to do is follow him. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about when it's going to happen. Don't worry about when the rapture is going to take place. Don't worry about when the Antichrist is going to show his face. Right. Amen. Just occupy until he comes. Somebody said that's the best kind of pie. Better than cherry pie. Better than berry pie. Better than apple pie. Better than peach pie. Occupy. Amen. It's not for the church to occupy. And I'm not just talking about sitting around. Amen. 
Jesus said, it's not time for you. It's not, I mean, it's not for you to worry about that. Amen. He said that she shall receive power. Amen. Jesus slaps them back into reality. They were worried about the hour. Jesus said, don't worry about the hour. You need to worry about the power. Right. And then when you really got the power, the hour doesn't mean a thing because greater is he that is in me Amen. than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. So many of us are, and I don't like it either. I told my wife, I said, see, we're driving down the road seeing $5 and 11 cents for gas. Right. Anybody like that? Raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. I don't think anybody likes that. Amen. But I, I can't focus on that. Amen. I, I know it costs a lot more to fill up our gas tank. I know my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. I know he said every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I own all the fowls of the mountain and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Jesus did. 
He just ignored it. Look at this. I was even like this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but if I would have been fine, but well, I tell you what, heal them, and then I'll answer all your questions. You take care of them, go out crack a girl, buy you dinner. You can ask me all the questions, I'll tell you every time. But Jesus just ignored us. Sometimes you've got to learn to ignore some things. Mm. Great men of the Bible ignored things. When David, the only thing David was doing was obeying his father and being the peace of delivery guy for his brother when he found the beast off the life. They started telling him about what was going to be done for the man that slayed this giant. You know, Eliab, his oldest brother, the second most important man in his life, said, I know the pride and the naughtiness of your heart. You're just here that you might see a bad. I said it so many times before. David didn't have the gift of sarcasm like I had. I would say, if I came to see a fight, I want a refund. It looks more like a trap team. <laughs> Ain't no fight. You know, y'all run like a bunch of cowards. <laughs> Amen. But you know what David did? He looked back to the people that was offering the promises. We need to look at the one that offered the promises. And he said, what shall be done to this man that slays that? He just ignored his brother. Sometimes you've got to learn to ignore negativity. Right. Sometimes you've got to learn to ignore discouragement. All he's there for to do is to drag you down. But I'm not planning on going down. I'm planning on going up. Maybe I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for a hole in the sky. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the undertaker. Hey man, I've got something in me. Hey man, it was in Jesus. The lion, the tribe of Judah. It won't let me lay down on that tomb. I've got to rise up. Spring up. You don't have to worry about that. That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. And sometimes we have to learn to just say so. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, they wouldn't bow down. The king said, if you don't bow down, amen, we're going to throw you in the furnace, fiery furnace. You know what they said? They said, so? They were redeemed so they could say so? Yeah. Don't talk about it, do it. Hey, put up or hush up. Amen. You see when you got the Holy Ghost, when you got it, God before you, who can be against you? And I will say, Holy, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man can do unto me. Amen. So they just said so. Amen. Daniel, if you don't stop praying, if you don't stop praying, if you don't stop praying, we're going to throw you, amen, into a hungry den of lions. He was redeemed, so he said so. So. He got there, he was dead four days. Lord, 
He's dead guys, so. Right. So, right. you know what Jesus did? Before he called Lazarus forth, he called those things that be not as though they were. Right. We're supposed yes. to do. Yes, he did. We're not supposed to call those things that are as they are. We're supposed to call the things that are not as though they were. Right. Like Abraham walking around without a child. Amen. Call himself the father of one nation. Right. See, when you begin to confess the word, that's when the promises begin to come your way. Right. 20, 20, God called Abraham out at 75. He didn't have a child until he was 100. Right. And, and a year before, God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, father of the nations. Right. And finally, within a year, he had a child. You know why? Because Abraham started saying what God said. Mm -hmm. What's your name? I'm the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. God said, I have made you. God said, I have made you. Now, I will make you. I have made you a father of many nations. Years before, All right. the child came. All right. Because he calls us those things to be not as though they were. And Jesus walks up to a tomb of a man who's been dead four days and stinking. Right. And before he even calls him forth, he stops. He says, I thank thee, Father, thou hast heard me. But he ain't prayed yet. Call those things to be not as though they were. Hmm. If you ask anything, believe that you receive it right then. And you shall have it. Yes. It may not manifest yet, but you shall have it. If you through faith and patience inherit the promise of God, behold, the beginning of your confidence is steadfast unto the end. Mm. Yes. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence which had greater recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. If it don't happen today, it'll happen tomorrow. All right. If it don't happen tomorrow, it'll happen the next day. Right. Amen. Our job is only believe. We've got one job believe. Let's not mess it up. All right. Jesus said, I thank thee, Father, that thou hast heard me. And I know that you always hear me. I really didn't say it for me because you got this. But for those that are around me, I said it. Yeah. That they may know that you've sent me into this world. Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. And because he knew that he heard me, it happened just like that. Be it unto you according to your faith. Amen. I'd sit 
sit down Indian style and make her tell me that story over and over and over again. The only trigger she had was a little scar right there. And she said, I believe God left that as a memorial stone. But my point is this. It didn't happen the instant they prayed. Amen. Sometimes you got to hold on to the promise. There you go. And you got to speak the word. Yes. You got to speak the word by his strife. I'm healed by his strife. I'm delivered. Amen. Amen. I call forth wealth. I call forth riches. I bind, amen, the treasures of the wicked are laid up for the righteous. I claim my shape. Amen. I claim $80,000 in the name of Jesus Christ. Hard time I'm rambling, but I'm going to come here to office to let me ramble. I saw Andrew a couple years back was having a hard time finding a job. Hard time. Every place he goes, something would fall through, and he'd get a job and fall through, and it worked for a little while and fall through. One day I was at the church, I remember I went to church praying, and I got mad. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get mad. Sometimes you got to get mad. And I said, In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the devil that's trying to hinder Andrew's finances. There you go. And I said, I lose victory, I lose riches, I lose the angel. And man, at the end of his life, that was on a, a Monday, Tuesday, he had two job offers. Thursday, he was turning around, he had two more jobs, he had to turn them around. Been working ever since. Amen. My most financial stable one out of all my kids right now. Why? Because sometimes you got to bind the devil. Sometimes you got to bind. You can't go into the strong man's house and spoil his goods, except you first bind the strong man. Years ago, when Angie and Sandra were first started dating, I remember Brother Waller's mom was, was backslidden. And I think she had been married to this man she was married to. At this time, I guess he had been known to, to be abusive. I was a new convert. Amen. And not had the Holy Ghost very long. I remember her mom called scared to death because he left the house in a rage and was mad at her. He'd been known to abuse some of his ex women, the next uh, wives or whatever, and what have you, and she was scared. She literally barricaded the door, put a uh, couch and loves different things up against it so that he couldn't get in. She said, pray for me, I'm scared, I'm scared. I remember she woke up on a prayer meeting right there. We all knelt down on the couch over there right over the tracks and Grand City got down on her hands and knees and face and began to pray, God, protect her, protect her. And when it wasn't too, too much longer, she got a phone call. She said that man, her husband came to the door and this was her testimony. She said, as he was out driving, he said, I was thinking of everything I can do to hurt you. Physically, emotionally, I was so mad. All I wanted to do was hurt you. He said, but when you opened that door, he said, I never felt such a love for you. Came over me and I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to bind the strong man, greater is he that is in me, than he that is in the world. Some of you, I know some of you today got some family situations. Some of you didn't think you wanted to come today, didn't think you was going to make it. I'm telling you, he's able to do it, see him, and abundantly above all that you can ask for today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the hour of power. The hour of power. The hour of power. I'll never forget that night. Bishop, January 15th, 1989. I came into that forefront. I'll never forget sitting in that chair with my hands raised. And like billows of the spirit swept over me and it almost knocked me back in the chair as I began to speak another tongue as the spirit gave me the other ones. I'll never forget that. And I've never been the same from that day to this day. Why? Because I've been endued with power from on high. Especially in our day, but we cannot be bound with fear. 
Hallelujah. The psalmist said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? With the wicked, even my enemies, my foes came upon me in my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though an ocean and camp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide in his brigade. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore. Church, and she called. I remember 
to bring the phone up to me, talk to me. She said, Dad, I'm scared. I'm in so much pain. I don't know what's going on. I had to pull over. I can't have my, my hands locked up. My feet locked up. And she started describing what was going on. So it sounds like we got kidney stones. I think she started hyperventilating, panicking. She was in so much pain. Andrew went with her, and they ended up taking her to the emergency room after. I said, you want me to come? She said, no, Andrew's coming. Just wait till after service. Come over. This is the altar call. It was almost over. I went to the hospital and seen her. And, and we prayed. Amen. And she was still nervous. I said, you know, Courtney said, the Bible said, be still and know. Mm. I, I said, until you calm yourself, you can't know he's God. Mm. Sometimes we have to learn to just be still. Yes. We're driving down the road with kids in the back of the car arguing. Mm. Be still. Be still. I prayed for her twice and I told her, so you got to just relax and calm down. Know that he is God. The third time I prayed for her, sometimes you just got to keep on. Sometimes you just got to keep on. But the stone's like, third time I prayed for her, she started laughing. She said, it's all gone. Huh? Those of you ever bring an and put all that pain that she goes, it's embarrassing, but I don't need it. I said, well, the stone did it. I just came and put all this stuff on the tray. And she was kind of sheepishly embarrassed. She goes, she goes I'm, I'm fine now. I'm okay now. I want pizza. <laughs> <laughs> then by 1130, I said, well, I think pizza closes, or whatever time it was, about 1030, I think it wasn't closed at 11. I told Eric, to call him pizza, go get pizza. <laughs> We're going to have a pizza party. Yeah. We've been all night at the hospital turned to a pizza party. Why? Because we've got power. Yes. We've got power. Wow. We've got power. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We've got the power. You don't need to worry about the hour. Jesus had a message for his disciples. The last message was this. Don't leave you until you got the power. Until you got the power. Let's all stand here and read this one. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is for everybody. Today's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. The day we celebrate this outpouring that I read to you, what I read to you, goes on in Acts chapter 2 and they receive the Holy Ghost. And it is for everybody. I promise unto you and your children to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know if you're here, if you need the Holy Ghost today, or not, or not I'm not saying it, and, and, and Jesus said you must be born again, I understand. But we do, we have to be born water spirit. Now, I'm a, Focus on the negative aspect, so to speak. I want to focus on the positive. Anybody here tired of being busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted? Anybody here tired of swimming underwater with the problems of your life? Come on. Do you want the power? You want something in you that when you get knocked down, it will cause you to rise up again? Do you want something in you that says, Rejoice, God, that gives me all my name when I fall, for I shall rise again? Though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Yes. If you want the power of the Holy Ghost, you can have it. If you had the Holy Ghost 50 years and you're still believing, living below the life circumstances, it is time for a renewal. So notice this. I'm not a rocket science. I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know a whole lot. I'm not the brightest light in the heart. I don't know a whole lot about that. But Jesus said this. He said, you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come on, right? Now, that doesn't just work the first time. If it's been a while since you've prayed in the Spirit, if you prayed in the Spirit this morning, that's fine. All I know is from what Jesus thought, and the Holy Ghost comes on you, the power comes on you. So if you've got power, or if you want power, if you need power, today is your day. And when you really need the power, you don't need to worry about the hour. Hallelujah. You know when the time is? Now. This is biblical teaching. I was just, now is the second time. Now is the day of salvation. We often just quote that and say today is the day of salvation. It doesn't say that. It says now is the day of salvation. You know why it says now instead of today? Because today gives you 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. Too much to play with. And we'll mess it up. But he said, now is the time. Now is the day 
of salvation. And we're not going to pull, we're not going to cry. I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to go open the altars up. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost in mind, I want you to come. If you do have the Holy Ghost and you want more of God in your life, that should be everybody. <laughs> I want you to come. Now, if you've been seeking the Holy Ghost for a while, the easiest way to get it is just to start worshiping Him. Now, you've got to repent of your sins. Let's all do that right now. Let's ask God to forgive us. He's so merciful. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Lord, we're mindful of the work that you did on Calvary. Lord, they spit in your face. They mocked you. They ridiculed you. They smacked you with an open palm and said, prophesy unto us. Who was it that spoke you? You took 39 stripes on your back. They pierced your side. Your visage was so hard, more than any man in your form, more than the sons of man. And you did it for us. Lord, you did it because you love us. And I thank you for that. But Lord, I pray for any wicked way in me. Or any wicked way in those who before me tonight. God, I pray one more time you have compassion on us. Have mercy upon us. And forgive us. Wash us in your blood this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And we thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your love. And we thank you for your grace. Now, if you prayed sincerely this morning and asked him to forgive you, leave it there. It's under the blood. Let it go. Don't pick it up again. For the Lord is graceful, graceful and merciful. The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, plenteous and mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor reward us according to our iniquities, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them and fear. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them to fear him, for he knoweth our friend, he remembereth that we have been dust. Even as your parents are those who love your grandparents, have forgiven you as a little child when you messed up. He's forgiven you. Leave it there. And now you can come and worship him and praise him. And if you will praise him and worship him, the Bible said that in heaven is the prayers of Israel. He's the prayers of his people. As you begin to praise him and worship him, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And it's so easy to receive the Holy Ghost. I told you about my experience. January 15th, 1989. It took me a long time to receive the Holy Ghost. It seemed like a long time. And I was nervous and I was stressed out every time somebody prayed with me. And I get put so much pressure on me. But the day I received the Holy Ghost, it was so easy. I just lifted my hands and started praising Him. And it happened. It happened. Amen. Words I never heard of begin to come out of my mouth. And I've never been the same. Amen. If you want something from God, or if you just want to come praise Him, or if you just want to be filled or refilled with the Holy Ghost, why don't we all come stand up here? Don't be ashamed.